Uh, Franco, your response to the governor general's response, first of all, that really it, it's not her decision is what it sounds like uh, Rito Hall is saying, that this is something the Canadian Armed Forces sign off on. Well, it's very disappointing. I mean, leadership has to start at the top. That means that we have to be pointing the finger either at the governor general or prime minister Justin Trudeau. But I mean, the initial reaction is that this is outrageous. We are talking about nearly $100,000 in in-flight cater catering for the governor general and for 29 other passengers. But, but also, this really shows contempt for taxpayers' hard-earned money. Also, we have to remember that the cost per person here, they're spending more than $3,100 and in-flight catering alone. So when taxpayers see that eye-watering tab, I think we have every right to feel disrespected. So I understand the math as well. It certainly sounds like a lot. It would be really interesting to see a breakdown of what yes. it entailed, right? Um, but my question is, is this unusual uh, um, or, or is this something that just kind of flies under the radar and now it becomes a talking point because of where we are when it comes to affordability, when it comes to inflation and so on? Well, there's two issues there. Number one, uh, we would love to see a full breakdown on exactly what was spent. Like, how did they manage to rack up nearly $100,000 on in-flight catering? But not just that. I think this huge tab warrants a, a, a full shedding of, shining of the light on the entire trip. Well, what type of expenses did they rack up while they were on the ground? What were the accommodation expenses? What were the, the meal expenses when they're actually on the ground, not just in the air? But number two, unfortunately, when it comes to Rideau Hall, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There has been tons and tons of reports from Rideau Hall on massive spending. We're talking about expense accounts for former governors general. We're talking mm -hmm. about uh, pensions that are unheard of in the private sector, all on top of an annual salary for the governor general north of $300,000 every year. And Franco, and, and while that may rile, Canadians, no doubt, who are concerned about the bottom line and how taxpayer money is spent. Uh, this is an official position uh, in Canada, you know, representing the Queen at all. Uh, and so is this something that I'm hearing you say should be abolished? I mean, how, how can they adjust this so it's not seen or is something that becomes um, such a red flag for, for people who are angry at these kind of expenses? Well, I think there's two things that we're talking about here. Number one, uh, we, we expect people in positions of leadership, like the governor general, to use some common sense. I mean, we shouldn't be talking about uh, expenses that are nearly $100,000 uh, for in-flight catering. I mean, that is absolutely crazy. We need our leaders to have respect for taxpayers' hard-earned money, especially when the federal debt is more than a trillion dollars, especially after two years of a very tough pandemic. But what we're really talking about is let's and some of these crazy expenses and perks that the governor general gets. For example, mm -hmm. former governors general can bill taxpayers for more than $200,000 every single year for the rest of their lives and up to six months after their death. That is unheard of for most hardworking Canadians. That's the stuff that we're talking about. Right. So it's an institution that needs to be um, amended in, in some way, shape or form, not necessarily abolished, Franco? Well, we need Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to put Rideau Hall's expenses under the microscope. Uh, we talked about the expense accounts. Th that, that should be completely scrapped. Mm -hmm. But also, let's not forget about the Payette pension problem, where a governor general is eligible for a full pension regardless of how long they serve. So you have former governor general, Julie Payette, who served for a little bit more than three years, and she is still eligible to collect an estimated $4 million through her pension to the age of 90. That is, uh, it, it should be unthinkable. Franco Terrazano, Federal Director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, thanks for your time today. Thanks so much for having me on.